Surely God is in this place. Help me notice. Good morning and welcome to worship at Fort Massey. My name is Sharon Valentine and my pronouns are she and her. I am the intentional interim minister serving Fort Massey here in Halifax. Whoever you are, wherever you are, we are glad that you have chosen to worship with us where everyone is welcome, needed, valued, and belongs. We gather in person here in the sanctuary and online via the Fort Massey YouTube channel. Today is February 19th, 2023, and it is Transfiguration Sunday. It is also the last Sunday in Epiphany and the third and final Sunday in Shrovetide. Shrovetide, you might remember from last week, is a time of focusing on how we are the light of the world. And today, as we think about transfiguration, however you find yourself, I invite you to imagine yourself climbing up the mountain, up on that mountaintop, and those kinds of mountaintop experiences that are beyond what words can describe. At this moment, I'm going to ask Gary to play some quiet music as Lily and her helper come forward to light our candle. If you have a candle at home, I invite you to light it now or just hold the light of Christ in your heart. Come, says the Lord, come up to the holy mountain. A voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. We light the candle inviting God to shine in us, inviting God's light to shine through us, touching our neighbors with love and compassion, inviting God's light to shine in all creation, that we all might behold God's light and God's love, Christ's light shine. We gather in this place with gratitude, acknowledging that we are located on the traditional land of the Mi'kmaq Nation. This territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship which the Mi'kmaq and the Wallastuck peoples first signed with the British Crown in 1725. We also acknowledge the lands and first peoples of wherever people are worshipping virtually. May we live with respect and gratitude on this land and live in peace and in friendship with all people and creation. May it be so. Please join me responsibly in the call to worship. The words are printed in your bulletin and on the screen. God be with you. God touches the world. God touches us. Both in the brightness of day God's light shines through. Into our ears, God communicates a word of love. Into our hearts, God communicates a word of comfort. Into our souls, God communicates a word of commitment. We listen. We receive, we respond with our ears, our hearts, and our souls. Forgiven, freed, loved by the Holy One, we offer praise and thanks. As we settle more deeply into this time of worship, getting comfortable where you are, connecting with the earth beneath your feet, giving yourself 
a moment to pause. Just be still. Connect with the divine however you know and understand the holy. We breathe together. Let's breathe in a sense of openness and welcome. And as we release, let go of any tension, anything that is distracting. Again, let's just breathe it in together and let it out into silence. Eternal God of time and space, we gather in worship, hoping to catch a glimpse of the transfigured Jesus that the disciples witnessed long ago on the mountaintop an experience that changed them forever. And yet, we tremble, O oh God, fearing that this experience will be more than we can bear. We pray to you, the transfigured one, that as we sing, pray, and proclaim the word, we will be transformed by your love, a love that casts out all fear. Radiant God, let us experience your glory. Let us be amazed and awed. Let us come as you beckon. Help us not to take for granted the mountaintop experiences or the valleys. Dazzling spirit, Inspire this time. Visit each of us with your amazing grace, your mindfulness, your peace. Reach us anew today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as we prepare to sing, you're invited to stand or remain seated according to your comfort, knowing that we all rise in spirit. Feel the spirit enliven in us as we sing, Arise, the light has come, Voices United, 79. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I invite everyone to share a sign of peace with those around you. Good morning. My name is Lily Knorr. Our thanks today to Gary Williams, our guest pianist, to Jade Frazier and the choir, to Nancy Riggs reading scripture, to Ian and Linda McDonald for ushering, to the Jansen family doing tech this morning, 
Say it to you, Laura, leaving our Sunday school, and I will be providing nursery care. Our announcements are in Thursday's newsletter and also printed in the bulletin. Here are some highlights. Please sign up to host refreshments on the bulletin board in the Tobin Street lobby. Volunteers are needed for treasurer as well as new members for the Ministry of Personnel, Administration, and Nominating Committees. Please talk to Linda McDonald, Nominating Committee, if you can serve in any of these ways. Also, please let Linda know if you're interested in being in the search committee for a permanent minister. Allison has placed an ad for the job posting of Sexton 10 hours a week. If you or someone you know may be interested, please apply. All those in grades 7 to 12 are invited to join the Peninsula Youth Group at St. John's tonight, 5 to 7. We're encouraged to come out for dinner, conversation, games, and planning for this spring. Please join. Due to tomorrow's Heritage Day, there will be no craft or chat tomorrow, and the church office is also closed. Tomorrow, the Affirmed Committee of Region 15 is hosting a workshop on Zoom on neurodiversity at 7 p.m., addressing brain injuries. Please see the link in the newsletter to register for this free event. If you're eating at home on Tuesday night, consider doing a virtual dinner time sharing between 5.30 and 6 on Sharing Zoom. If you're going out for Show of Tuesday Pancakes, please consider supporting the St. Andrew's event on Cohort Street. All of their proceeds are supporting Phoenix House. Donations for Easter flowers should be in by March 26. Fort Massey is providing food for the Dalhousie Monday Night Supper, February 27. Please help out if you can. Save the date for our annual congregational meeting on Sunday, March 12th. We wish a happy birthday to Joyce McDowell on February 23rd, and blessings and best wishes to all celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or any other celebrations this week. Please join together as we say our new creed, our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is created, who is come in Jesus, the Lord made flesh, to reconcile our faith, who works in us and the works of our spirit, who trusts in God, who has called to be the church, celebrate God's presence. To live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to see justice as things succeed, to proclaim Jesus, the crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us, we are not alone. Thanks be to God. We acknowledge that we are forever dealing with changes. May we experience all through the love and presence of God, touching us, transforming us, on mountaintops and in valleys, in moments when our lives are shrouded in the cloud, we reflect God's light. God is with us in every moment, declaring we too are the beloved, in this moment, in every moment, may we glimpse the grace of God, which comes and transfigures each of our lives. In giving and in receiving, you are invited now to imagine or pretend to hold the offering plate. As we offer gratitude, our offering will now be received. God, 
mighty and holy one, you astound us. Help us to encounter the holy that is right in front of us. May all the gifts that we give and receive be transformed into hope and into courage. Pour them out so they might be used to transform all those who find themselves in the valleys of hunger, of loss, of loneliness, and injustice. We share as we experience your love. Bless us, our gifts. Use them and us to shine your light and love here and throughout our world, for we ask all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our time for the young and the young at heart. Have you ever climbed up a hill or maybe even a mountain? Think about what was an easy part? What was hard? Did you stop and have a rest? Did you make it all the way up? Did you find yourself maybe breathing really fast? Were you running ahead and encouraging others to come along? Were you kind of at the end? Were you just looking around as you went up that hill or mountain? And when you got to the top, what did you see? In the stories of the Bible, a mountaintop is a special place, important, Events take place at the tops of mountains. Encounters with God take place at the tops of mountains. So whenever you hear a mountain mentioned in a Bible story, you can go, aha, something special is about to happen. In today's Bible story, Jesus goes to a mountaintop with Peter, James, and John right in front of his friends, James, P Peter, and John, the way that Jesus looked was changed. We call it transfigured. In Greek, it's called metamorphosis. Jesus was looking really unusual. Everything about him, his clothes were dazzling white. He was shining so brightly even his face was shining. Can you imagine that? I have a friend who uh, did a thing with green screens and cameras and showed how it could be really bright and shining. What was more even interesting than all the shining, perhaps, was that Jesus was talking with two prophets, with Moses and Elijah, and they'd both been dead for a really long time. You probably remember Bible stories about Moses and Elijah. It was so bright and so surprising. Peter started to talk. He wanted to build special dwellings, markers, sometimes called tents or shrines, to honor Jesus and Moses and Elijah, to celebrate what was going on. But while he was talking, suddenly a cloud came over the space and the voice of God spoke, telling them all that Jesus was God's own beloved son and that they should listen to Jesus. When the disciples looked again, Moses and Elijah were gone. And Jesus was no longer all shiny. They all bowed down. They were afraid. It had been such an amazing experience, but how would you begin to understand it? And Jesus came and touched them and told them not to be afraid. And then going down the mountain, Jesus said not to tell anyone about what they'd seen until in the future he was talking about Easter when Jesus died and then Jesus' resurrection returning to life. I know it's not 
about the same, but I bet you can think of times when you've been so excited to do something, to go somewhere. Perhaps it was like your birthday party, and you're feeling all happy, and it's hard when it's all over. I think that Peter, James, and John will remember that mountaintop all of their lives, and we will too, because we hear about it in the story, but we're also invited to imagine that we are wrapped in that cloud, a cloud of love that hugs us, that holds us, and reminds us how much we are loved each and every day. We are still learning from that story in our lives each day. Draw me a picture this week of a special memory of something exciting you've done where you felt really good inside. Or write me a story about a memory that's special to you. Let's pray together doing a repeating prayer. Remember, I'll say the words first and you say them after me. Dear God, thank you for special memories and fun things in our lives. Thank you for hard work and learning new things. Thank you for Jesus and all that he teaches us. Amen. And now we pray together the words that Jesus said with his friends as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as we prepare to sing again, we're singing Shine Jesus Shine, I want you to think about how we are all lights in the world. We invite Jesus to shine through us. And you're going to find the words to shine Jesus shine both on the screen and in your bulletin. It is not in our hymn books. So let us sing.
this morning, Nancy is reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 to 9. Jesus transfigured on the mountain, and she is reading today from the Revised Common Lectionary. You heard me tell the story to the children. I invite you to just close your eyes. Go with Peter, James, John, and Jesus, and enter into the experience for yourself. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead offered as wisdom for the journey. Amen. And I invite you now to receive the ministry of music climbing up the mountain.
May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts bring you praise, O God. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to receive you. Open us to our own metamorphosis. Amen. Do you recall times when you've had a week? You know, perhaps the kind that leads us to negative feelings, negative words, or negative actions? Or at the other end, the kind of week that is a wow week, so amazing that you can hardly put it into words. This is so unbelievable. Well, Jesus, Peter, James, and John have had both extremes in one week. I imagine Peter there, talking so fast, hardly able to contain himself. Peter had probably climbed that mountain, carrying all the stress, fears, and frustrations that had been going on before they took on the mountain trek. Do you take time? Time to be apart from the rhythms of human concerns and daily challenges? Maybe go off to pray? Time to meditate? To just be? To pray with and for others and they for you? For Peter, this was to be an unexpected retreat. Six days later opens the gospel passage. Six days after Jesus tells the disciples that he's going to die. From Matthew 16, 22 and 23, we hear, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, never shall this happen to you. And Jesus said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. Can you imagine the devastation? In that moment, feeling so rejected and so emotional, so distraught. I think it gives you and me permission to take our hardest, deepest, most sorrowful moments to God in prayer, knowing that our emotions spill out and spill over. Jesus said to him, you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. How often do we get changed when we have our focus on God, on the divine, on the holy, on the present moment? Those times when we step away from our human responses, our emotions and fears and challenges. A few verses earlier in that same chapter of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 15 to 18, but what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the Lord God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, that on this rock I will build my church. Within a few brief verses, we are told of Peter getting that mountaintop revelation, aha, not on top of the mountain, but in conversation with Jesus. Jesus commending Peter for his faith and a desire that the church would be built on Peter as the rock. And a few minutes later, which could have been, you know, a while, there was 
the reality of Jesus being upset with him. Again, I think we're asked to connect in our own lives of the times when we feel God holding us close and inspiring us. All the extremes. Within chapter 16, we experience the tensions rising. The passages here are edgy. There's exchanges between Jesus and the religious authorities, among the disciples themselves, and between Jesus and the disciples. The Jewish authorities are asking Jesus for a sign to prove his identity to them, and Jesus refuses. What if the Jewish authorities had been on that mountaintop? Peter, James, and John were about to have Jesus' identity revealed radiantly, brilliantly, from the very voice of God confirming it. Peter challenges the idea of Jesus dying, basically forbidding it to happen. And Jesus rebukes him with the words of Matthew 16, 23, Get behind me, Satan. Talk about an argumentative confrontation. Six days later, Jesus walks with them to his mountaintop experience, modeling forgiveness, new hope. He did not tell Peter to stay home. He did not turn away from Peter. Even though there had been that difficult exchange, Jesus continues to model love and forgiveness. So for all those words and all those actions in our lives where we lament and regret, think that we can't be forgiven, we can come back to this story again, being renewed. Peter was completely caught up in what he was experiencing on that mountaintop. Recall when you have spoken in breathless excitement. You've been with someone and you were so animated or they were so animated that your heart was full. And can you think of those experiences where you've had to contain your joy or perhaps conceal your pain until a certain time or situation happened? As the disciples had to do going down the mountain after seeing Jesus transfigured, some of us are better at holding our tongues than others. There was this amazing brightness and glow of Jesus, these long dead figures, Moses and Elijah. Peter's carrying on about building these dwellings, and he's interrupted, interrupted by the voice of God from the cloud. That voice said, Hear it for yourself. You are the beloved. These words were heard. This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When all is over, when Moses and Elijah are gone, the voice has quieted. Jesus' face and clothing have returned to normal, and the disciples are left in holy awe and holy fear. Jesus. Jesus is what remains. Jesus, who they were to listen to and we are to listen to. Whatever all these signs and symbols, whatever they've met, the disciples now are with their Lord, as we are. Their teacher, the beloved Son of God, their friend. In the middle of all that talking, all of life stuff for us, 
God appears. God is there with us. We never get left home or left out. No matter how angry or upset, confrontational, no matter how wound up or excited, no matter how exhausted or confused, God is with us. That cloud of presence holds us always. If we pay attention, God will interrupt us to help us experience God's love more fully. Symbolically, perhaps you've had experiences of your own revelation, the manifesting of God, where it was like a cloud that descended, wrapped you up, and released you. And you knew in that revelatory moment exactly what you were called to do. You knew you were okay. You knew you had paused. You had stilled. You had connected with the divine. You felt peace. You might even be feeling it right now. Most of us have had mountaintop experiences and can testify to their importance in our lives. But all of us have also had to return to the valley. We strive to perceive God's presence at work in our lives, in the physical, in the mundane. Thomas Merton describes a world that is absolutely transparent and God is shining through it all the time. And most importantly, he sees that radiance because of the incarnation shining through each and every one of us. You might have heard the telling of the story where Merton just looks around and everybody seems to be shining, glowing, filled with such a sense of unexplained presence that all Merton can do is feel that love. There's no way of telling people that they're all walking around shining like the sun, he writes. Merton recognizes the secret beauty of their hearts, the depths of their hearts. If the early church believed the transfiguration gave us a foretaste of heaven, then opening up our eyes and our hearts to that light, to that radiance within each one of us, no matter who we are or where we are on life's journey, that is a hint of what is underneath all reality, what lies ahead of us. We come as pilgrims, taking deep breaths, we follow the Christ. We are to shine with Jesus' presence in our lives, wearing robes of love and compassion, garments of justice and peace. Moments of transfiguration change us, sustain us, prepare us, encourage us, and guide us into the future, regardless of the circumstances we face. They show us who we are, beloved metamorphosis, the transfigured people of God. Praise be to God, and amen. Creator God, you touch the world. The world is changing. And we pray for your peace 
and the work of your spirit. Companion, on our journey, you touch us. We are transformed in faith. Continue to help us to be the light of the world, on mountain, in valley, everywhere. Help us to know when we need to step apart, take a time for our retreat, to pray, and to pray with and for others. Illumine us with your presence as we continue to lift up all of the challenges, the tragedies, violence and abuses here and throughout our world and of the joys and awesome wonders, everything in our day to day, we are yours. We march, we run, we trip, we fall, we crawl, we cry, we take tentative steps, but in all, you are with us. Help us shine our light of faith in all places as we are continually lifted up, ourselves forgiven, transformed, and changed through our faith. We come sharing our doubts, our fears, our joys and concerns. Receive them from our hearts. Thank you, Holy One, that in you we shine, beloved, transformed, transfigured, changed. In the name of your transfigured Son, Jesus. Amen. And as we prepare to sing again, feel the experience of the light, of the closing of this epiphany season, but knowing that our light shines in all things. Let there be light. It is Voices United 679. Let there be light. now in peace, opening our heart to wonder. Beloved community, may God, who is light and the maker of light, 
shine light in and through you and me. May Jesus, who was born in an angelic light to manifest light, shine light in and through you and me. May the Spirit, who disperses the light through the earth and the cosmos, enlightening all of God's people, guide you and guide me to be the light wherever we go, knowing that you and everyone you meet are of the light. And together, we can dazzle the world, the brightness of justice and joy. God bless you.